This is Coming to Peace with Science, and I'm Daryl Falk. This is part three of the series which explores the characteristics of human chromosome two and how those characteristics point to God having created humankind gradually through the evolutionary process. Now, we explore what the existence of this evolutionary pathway has to say about the nature of God's activity in the creation of our species. Until recently, it might not have been clear if God was more like a super engineer working at a design table at lightning speed, ensuring that every part was always in place and functioning perfectly like the interacting pieces of a clock or the parts of a smoothly functioning automobile. God could have brought our species into existence that way. It's the easiest way to picture God working because that's how we build things. Indeed, all human creations, from bridges to buildings, from computers to televisions, are assembled by putting the parts together, one by one, until the finished product is completely manufactured. That's how we create. Just, however, because we would do things that way, doesn't mean that God would create our species, Homo sapiens, in that way. If we want a model as to how God might create the human species, perhaps we need look no further than how God creates our own individual bodies. We as single persons are not created in the way puppets or robots are created. Our bodies, starting off from the arrival of the sperm at the outer membrane of an egg, essentially create themselves. We now know in exquisite detail the nature of the molecular interactions that occur to make the human body. As long as that fertilized egg is provided with a warm chamber, a source of oxygen, and a rich supply of tiny building blocks, sugars, amino acids, vitamins, and lipids, the body self assembles. We know in broad outline the forces that are at work. There is no magic, there's no knitting needles, and no vital force that defies natural laws. Once the starting seeds, the sperm and the egg, are in place, the cascade of self-assembly events kicks in. And yet we never cease to marvel at the miracle that is the birth of each baby. Everyone who studies any aspect of the process gets up from their studies with a deeper and the deepest sense of awe at how something so simple can give rise to something so absolutely beautiful and so exquisitely complex. Psalm 139 talks about this. For those of us who are believers, we do not in any way think that the Psalm 139 is untrue when it states, you, God, you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. The fact is that this psalm is even more true and more beautiful now that we know that God's process is one of fostering and empowering the body to make itself. Because we can describe this self-assembly process in great detail, it does not mean that we think that God plays no role in our lives, that he's a hands-off God. God is love, and we are his children in a way that is so much richer than how Pinocchio is the child of the puppet builder Capito, or Deep Blue is the child of the IBM engineers. With our having come to light, God loves us even more than that depicted by the tender scene of a mother holding her newborn baby close to her body. We are loved that much by God and more, and we celebrate the process by which God brings each baby into being. God charts our life, and God's spirit at our behest enters into our being, guiding us into everlasting life. We are no less the children of God, and the process is no less God's process, just because it is a cascade of molecular events which we can describe. So ought it be surprising that the process by which God created our species is analogous to how God created our individual human bodies, just like God could have made our individual bodies using some mysterious process that had no natural explanation, if God had chosen to do it that way. God could have created our species in a mysterious and unexplainable fashion as well. The question, however, is not could God have created our species that way. Rather, it is did God create our species that way. And in this series on chromosome 2, we've examined one tiny thread in the interwoven tapestry of hundreds of threads which demonstrate that we were created through the evolutionary process. What does it mean to say that God created our species if he chose to do so through natural processes that we can define and describe and consider detail. All that happened in the unfolding of our species happened because of God's ongoing presence in the universe. We can say that God created our species because not only did God create the natural processes that gave rise to us, but the natural processes themselves are a manifestation of the very activity of God. Without that divine activity, all would collapse into nothingness. Not chaos, but nothingness. 
The natural laws don't exist apart from God. They are a manifestation of the moment by moment, instant by instant presence of God. Take God out and there is nothing. The reason scientists can study and analyze the way the world works is because this aspect of God's activity is repeated day in and day out in exactly the same way. The success of science depends upon repeatability and certain aspects of the activity of God are highly repeatable. This does not mean that this is the only way God works, repeatable and always in the same manner. God does choose to work differently sometimes. The resurrection is the supreme example, but so are the miracles of Jesus and the miracles we experience still today. But the natural laws are every bit a manifestation of God's activity, as are the miracles. It's just that they reflect that aspect of God's activity that is regular and ongoing. So the thing I like most in thinking about God as parent in the making of our species is that just as God has not made our individual bodies in a manner that parallels how the IBM engineers made Deep Blue, so also God's mechanism of creating our species is one of self-assembly. This does not mean that there were no miracles along the way. There might have been, but our species has been created by the activity of God, regardless of whether it is through the moment-by-moment -moment describable activities associated with, with the evolutionary process or the unique activity associated with miracles. God knew where creation was going. We were willed into existence by God, and we as a species are here by God's providence. God created us from other pre-existing species, just like God created our individual bodies from a pre-existing sperm and egg. But we were created to be God's children, the bearers of God's image. We were created to be the crowning glory of creation, and that is what we can be as we live our lives in and through Christ Jesus our Lord. There is much more to be said about the responsibility of creation as a whole and what it means to live life in God's image. But just because we were created through the primate lineage, no more makes us like monkeys than being created from a sperm or egg deprives our lives of significance and makes us like a sperm or an egg. Thanks for listening, and I hope we can all get on with the task of being the people of God that he has created us to be.